Are you doing 100% of what you are capable of or only 100% of what's asked of you? Who has had the greatest impact on your life so far and why? Oh, well, I mean, the greatest impact on my life, I can't, I think the greatest impact on anybody's life is their family. Um, whether it is a good impact for some people or like whether it is a positive or yeah. not, that's different. And whether they've helped them get to where they are, that's mm -hmm. a totally different question. But in terms of impact, I don't think, I think it's, I don't think anyone can deny it would be their family for impact. Um, for me, fortunately, it was positive impact and positive. Right. Um, but yeah, my, I mean, my entire family has been amazingly supportive and all kind of playing those different roles that have helped feed me um, to get me to where I am. Um, part of elevating me has also been, you know, keeping me grounded. Yep. So it has been, a, it's been great. Like regardless of, I think regardless of how many Olympic medals I have or, you know, any achievements, um, if I were to, in their opinion, um, step out of line or mistreat someone or whatever, I'm sure mom would find a way to ground me somehow wherever <laughs> I am in the world, right? Oh, like, I love it. Just, love it. It, you know, it has nothing to do with skill. It has to do with how she raised me as a person, how, yeah. how they raised me as a person. And they could care less about, I mean, they're happy that I've achieved things, you know, sure. for which I really, you know, strived. But yeah. I mean, for them, it was about raising a good person, mm -hmm. um, not raising a good athlete. So yeah. And that was, I think that's, a, I think a distinction that a lot of um, parents really need to uh, kind of pay attention to Yeah. Um, in a yeah. lot of cases that their job is not to raise a, their job is to support their kids and pursuing and figuring out, you know, what they want to do and, and what they want to become. Mm -hmm. But I think a parent's job is to, you know, raise, raise character instead of raise an athlete. So anyway, I, I, yeah, definitely my parents, I mean, all for different reasons, but my sister, I mean, she's three years older than I am. So it's someone I looked up to. Mm -hmm. We didn't watch a lot of sports growing up. Okay. So, I mean, I can't eat. And even now I don't, <laughs> I don't really watch a lot of sports. Uh, <laughs> so for me, it was just, I wanted to be good enough to be able to keep up with my sister and her friends. And, you know, I, I, I just, I, I looked up to her so much in sports and how she was, how she played and how, you know, all of that stuff. And, you know, and then when I ended up making the national rugby team, she was the one who said, I'm living vicariously through you. So it's, it's weird. Like it's awesome. But I, I, I also think that my brother, he's younger. So it's not like I looked up to him necessarily. He's seven feet tall right now, but so I kind of technically look up to him now, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but I mean, for me, for whatever reason, I felt very um, like protective of him, not physically protective of him, but protective of him in terms of finding his way, especially through high school and stuff by owning his, like not succumbing to peer pressure and by owning his choices and decisions and, and by, you know, just being himself and, and, and that stuff. And I just felt like I almost before I even knowing what a role model was, for whatever reason, I took a lot of ownership in, in that, even yeah. when I was a young age. So yeah. it was, it's interesting. So they both kind of played different, different roles in my life for sure. You know, it's interesting what you said earlier about how, um, you know, your, your parents' job isn't to raise a good athletes, to raise a good person, right. And good character. And one in of the opinion. things, well, yeah, in your opinion, yeah. but, but it, it really, what, what's amazing about that is that's one of the things, oddly enough, that really comes out when you're on stage, when you were speaking on stage. So kudos to your parents, if they're watching, I hope they oh, watch. <laughs> honestly, because they did a great job because you, I mean, not to put down other speakers or the, like I've done, I've been to a lot of, I've seen a lot of speakers, been to a lot of things, talked to a lot of people and you can tell, you can just tell when someone's been raised right. It's just a thing. And when you're on that stage, it, it comes through. It, it really does. You know, I try to explain, to some younger kids this last week about about you and, and these 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 achievements and try to just put it into perspective what it takes to even get to the olympics never mind get there 
four times, win medals, gold, like just to even get like even close to that, what it takes from a, from like you say, the family, the community that gives, like, you know, that whole thing about it takes a, a community to raise a child. It really is that that goes hand in hand with sport too, to get to that level. Nobody does it on their own. Everybody yeah. thinks, you know, oh, she's so lucky. It must be genetics. It's just that whatever it's, it's everything and everybody. Right. And, and again, luckily you've been raised pretty much perfectly right for to, to, to be the person you are and you have such self-awareness. It really just resonates off the stage and every, okay. everything you do, it just does. So that's, you know, kudos to your parents and to your family and to you too for, Thank for you. not, because it's you and you know this it's so easy i've done i've talked to some people where it's the, not quite that as you as you probably I've know. Met a lot of people like that yeah right and, and it is what it is and, and not no judgment but just it's refreshing when you hear someone speak or when you talk to somebody or when you meet somebody you can just tell you can just tell so it's uh so thank kudos you. to your parents thank so, you very much from the book you mention uh that you will achieve your goals i'm going to read this so i get it right you will achieve your goals when they become more important than your excuses are powerful mm. oh that, <laughs> i love oh. what did you mean by that i mean i got it but what, what you got you it you got oh, it i don't know if it needs right. to be explained i i don't know if it needs to be explained i think it's we <clears throat> i think a key to achieving um our goals a, a key to achieving what we're actually capable of achieving um comes down to our ability to recognize our own excuses and so many times um we will justify these excuses or try to justify these excuses by saying they're legitimate reasons um but often they're not reasons they're not anything they're they're things that we have convinced ourselves in our brain and that's a lot of it is the stories we tell ourselves and and from either what our own abilities are growing up yeah. um, to, you know, things like gyms being shut down or, you know, there's, there's so many things, but whatever we're telling ourselves is um, we, we, we are very good at lying to ourselves. Yes. The times when it matters is when you actually get to the starting line of your race or you are about to do a tip off for that game or whenever that moment is when you're about to step on stage that is when you will have that voice in your head questioning yourself, but whether you have done everything or not, that it's possible or not. Right. And so <clears throat> that's when maybe our excuses kind of are like, oh my gosh, maybe I could have done more. Maybe I could have done. And if you call yourself out in the moment and I don't, I'm not judging you. If you don't want to go to the gym, just say you don't want to go to the gym. Don't say you don't have time. Right. Or all you have to say is that you prioritize something else, something else more important. That is absolutely fine. It is not my place to, to prioritize the things in your life. If, if you need a night to just watch Netflix and for the whole evening yeah. and eat heavenly hash ice cream, that's my favorite, um, <laughs> because just because you need a night to yourself, then then fine, as long as you are fully aware of the consequences of that, mm -hmm. consequences of doing something or not doing something and what that means. And if you can own that and move forward, then, then fine. Then it's your choice. It's not my choice. I don't like it. I think we just need to, um, we just need to call out our own excuses. And if we start doing that, then the goals will become closer and closer and closer and closer to where we are. Yeah. I love it. I, I love that so much. I, again, it's one of the things that I, talk to my athletes about is is that again no excuses but mm -hmm. if you have excuses then again there's consequences for for those actions and if you step on stage or step in the cage or step in the ring or step wherever whatever the case may be and in your head you can say to yourself i have done absolutely everything i can do to be at my very best at this very moment then you can't lose when that's like a line from my book that's a line from my keynote. There you go. See, it's I, literally I, I, like, I, I, I knew really too. early on that, it, that I just, you, there's so many things that are out of our control. Yes. So the only thing you can do is just be able to make sure that at that moment, yep. the moment that you are striving for, like that opportunity you are, you're preparing yourself for. Yep. That if you can just stand there and, and be able to honestly say to yourself that there's nothing more you could have done. Right. That you're a hundred percent prepared that whatever comes from this then then there's nothing more you could have done because then you can be at, literally at peace with any outcome exactly. because there's nothing more you could do if you if i lost the gold medal and we came second or if 
if I just missed making the Olympics yeah. um, and miss making the team, could I, would I be able to look back and say that there's nothing more I could have done? Or is there something else I could have done? And if I could have, why did I not do that? What excuse was I telling myself that prevented me from doing that? Yeah. And so that is what you're striving for. You're not striving for a result. You're striving for the moment where you can say, here we go. There's nothing more I could do. So let's like, and that can, comes down to mental preparation because mental preparation is what allows you to execute what you're physically able to execute. Mm -hmm. And so that whole package is literally right. It comes down to that moment. Right. And it's okay to get, it's okay to get beaten. It's okay to get beaten by somebody yeah. who is better, something that's better. Sure. And, but if you did everything you could possibly do, you can't lose. Like you just said, you cannot lose. Totally. Getting beaten by somebody better. Okay. That gives you something to work towards. Right. But if you go and you're not prepared and then you, then you've, you know, you've lost. Right. It's so the same thing yeah. as like saying, Oh, I need to take a day off. Yeah. I need to take a recovery day. Yeah. Is it because you really need a recovery day or is it because it's May 2 for weekend? Exactly. Let's, let's just think about this for a second. Yeah. Now, um, great. If you need a recovery day, awesome. Yeah. But if you just miss out on that medal or if you just miss out on something, is that day that you just skipped, yeah. is that going to haunt you for the rest of your life? Or are you still going to look at that and say, no, I actually chose that because it actually made my training for the rest of the week better. Right. I actually needed that. I will not regret that because I know that I needed that. My body, my, my nervous system, yep. my mind, I needed that. Great. Great. Then you will not regret that. But if you are taking a day off and it's something that later, if you don't make your goal, if you'll look back and regret that, that means that you're making excuses for yourself. It's the only way you can evaluate it. Exactly. I agree. hundred no. yeah. percent. So easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the other things, and again, it kind of ties into this. Are you doing just enough to get by or are you thriving? I love this question because this doesn't, this speaks to life, not, not just sport, right? Mm -hmm. And because totally. again, you can use that in business, you can use that in relationships, you can use that anywhere. So what did you, what did you mean by that? Yeah, there's another quote also in the book. It's very similar. And it just says, are you doing a hundred percent of what you are capable of or only a hundred percent of what's asked of you? And it's the same, it's the same thing. So it's the same thing as doing a job. Like, are you like just filing the sheets that you need to file? Are you just kind of getting through a day's work or are you being intentional about it and figuring out how you, you yourself can actually improve or do a little bit more to get noticed, to get that raise or that promotion? Or like, what are you just kind of checking off the days? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that comes with intentionality and, right. and purpose and figuring out why you're doing what you're doing, why you're doing that job or, and it, to be honest, if it means just to make money for whatever reason, like there's always another reason, money is never just the money is never the, the answer. Right. Um, there's always your kind of root why your fifth level why that tells you really why you're doing anything. Right. Um, and so I just think that like the intentionality behind anything we're doing is, is kind of really what get, gets you there. Yeah. And then, yeah. then again, it, that reminds me of Simon Sinek, right? Simon Sinek, you know, yes. why, and that's, that kind of is, is the real reason. Like if, and again, that passion, that intentionality, that has to come from somewhere much deeper money. Like you say, money, it can't just be for the money. Well, the money is for something like, yeah, money exactly. might be your, yes. your surface why, yeah. but your root why could be um, because you feel validated as a parent. Right. And you're like, whoa, whoa, how did you just jump from yeah. that? Well, why do you want to raise? Well, I want to raise because I want to put it into my kid's college fund. Right. Okay, well, why is it important that your kid has a, you know, college, you know, why, why is it important that he goes to college? Well, it's important so that he can have um, the education so he can make choices. Like, right. so he has the ability to make choices. Well, why is that important to him? Because I, maybe I know what it's like to not be able to make choices or I know what it's, I want him to have the freedom of doing that or, or I will feel more validated as a parent if my child has a degree or, and it really comes down to that honesty of, yep. of really figuring out why you're doing it. Yeah, so it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to give uh, one of these books away to one to someone who's very, very lucky who can, who can have this book and I'm going to get you to sign it for them. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Personalize it. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, so in closing, last question, do you have like, so what is a goal like 2021? Like you mentioned a few times, 2020, ugh, like it's, it's been crazy. Uh, nobody saw this coming. Nobody knew, no one know, and still, like you said, no one even still to this day, nobody kind of really knows what's happening, what to do, how to do. Um, and a lot of people are just in pure survival mode. However, we can't just stay in survival mode. We have to learn how to live and learn how to thrive even during circumstances like this. So um, for 2021, what, what do you have going on? What's big, what's coming up in 2021 for you? Big goals. Um, I don't know about big uh, because we don't know what happens. We right. don't know what, what things are allowed or, or that sort of thing. So, I mean, we kind of do have to keep things in perspective a little bit. Um, so traveling is, off yeah, the table off. for yeah. now yeah um but i'm uh there the whole when i was speaking prior to covid i mean i was on the road all the time i lived out of a suitcase basically yeah. Yeah. um and i owned i owned property in in prince edward island but i but i rented it out i don't because i was ne i'm homeless like i have no fixed address i should say yes. <laughs> so um so this whole covid thing i was kind of towards the end of 2019 starting to, I was excited because I had a really busy spring lined up for 2020, yeah. but I was also starting to think in the back of my mind how, how much I was kind of feeling, starting to feel a little ungrounded okay. because I was living on the road so much and I loved it and, and like different aspects of it, but I was really starting to feel a bit ungrounded. Mm -hmm. So I was planning on reducing my travel. Okay. Interesting. And COVID helped me out with that and <laughs> kind of all travel. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that stopped everything, kind of halted it in its, in its steps. At the time, at the end of 2019, I wanted to reduce my travel to get into more coaching, to be able to do more coaching with people because I missed that. I mean, I have a master's degree in occupational therapy and I realized that as much as I love empowering people from a stage and, and that sort of thing, I still miss making someone else's goal my goal like helping them with that and the nitty-gritty and walking them through that and helping with that you know champion mindset to help whatever their goals are and and i kind of missed that and so i was starting to think about ways to do to get back into doing that sort of thing yeah. and then COVID hit so i'm like okay great maybe it's a good opportunity maybe but then i realized that the internet was being saturated with offers and webinars and people who they themselves were in survival mode and because of that were offering things that I don't feel like they were necessarily qualified to offer yes and I just felt like it was a very saturated scene so I, I like I was being felt like I was being inundated and I was like oh my gosh I don't want to be part of that yeah so I took a step back and I said I need to kind of figure out where I fit in all this and what is happening with all this and and so it was a big it's you know it, it's I'm, it's still a work in progress to figure out all of that stuff. But I mean, I kind of dove back into it a little bit back in the fall and had a small coaching group in the fall and I loved it. It was so great. Um, but COVID also gave me the opportunity to do renovations on that, on that place that I own. Okay. And I, now I'm going to, now I'm getting more into real estate. So okay. there are a little, there are things that are kind of creeping up all over the place. But what I can say is that my goal is still to figure out different ways to get on different platforms and different stages, whether virtual or not, yeah. in order to reach as many people as I possibly can, because it's, especially in times of COVID, it is about redefining, you know, their lives and redefining what they believe is realistic within these times and figuring out how to do that. And I just, I want to be able to help people do that and, and own their own their stories. Awesome. I love it. And the first thing they can do is read this book because it, it really does. I'm, I'm not, I'm not just, that's not a plug. Well, it is, but it, it really, I'm, I'm not joking. Like it, it's a, it's a, it really hit home with me. Um, and again, the fact that, uh, you know, I got to, I got to see you live and in person and, and doing this today. Um, there's, there's nothing fake about you at all. It's, it's really like, again, kudos to your parents, kudos to you. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this book that a lot of people can learn from, they can grow from, they can develop from. And again, it's, it's the message 
that you said today and, and in the book too, is it's really just about becoming the best you can possibly be. I love that. So it's a great message in, in redefining realistic. It, it's, it's such a great title too. And it, and it's, I and timely it seems yes exactly especially right now so anyways i wish you i mean the absolute best with everything that you've got coming and um yeah i i really am looking forward to a time when everybody can kind of start living life a little bit differently or a little bit i guess i don't want to say we're going to live the way we used to because i don't think we're ever oh. going to um we have to redefine like you say here so uh, but anyways thank you so much for your time i know you're very very busy and i really appreciate uh this so so very much well thank you for having me this has been awesome well we should do it again sometime. absolutely i i would <laughs> When, when, when the second book comes, well, we'll do it before that, but yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Hey, everybody. <laughs>